All right, welcome back. Uh, welcome to the stream. <clears throat> Get in the stream. All the fishies. Get in the stream with me. Uh, the water is fine. How you doing? Uh, welcome back to Black Bear News. Please remember to like the video and make sure that you're still subscribed. Uh, Ringtailed Fox, CB Unglesby, Raza Remen, D Truth. Uh, so Ringtailed Fox uh, coming in with lots of info right at the top. Canada considers closing border as well. Ottawa announces a plan on how trade will continue with a closed border. Canadian trucks will proceed no further from American customs and either return with a trailer of goods for Canada or with an empty trailer after unloading on site. Same with American trucks. They'll proceed no further than Canada customs property. Last time that happened was September 11th. We had trucks backed up for 25 miles on Highway 401. It was a mess. I, I imagine it was. Jazz Farm says we are locked down at the farm. Nothing has really changed. Yeah. Um, nothing has really changed for me either, except for that the stores, it's difficult to find things at the stores because everybody's trying to buy everything all at once. You know, there's still plenty of food and goods to be had. Uh, the problem is that everybody goes to the store and buys them all. So people just trying to get some things are having difficulty, but I don't know how long that's going to last. Hopefully that won't last very long. Uh, but nothing has changed for me except for the fact that my, you know, my day gig, um, the thing that I, I, I schlep to during the day in order to bring in most of my income is suddenly uh, suddenly not bringing in any income. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I really, don't really know what to do about that uh, since it's only been a couple of days. So, but the last couple of days have been uh, fairly terrible. So I don't know what to do about that. I think <clears throat> for the time being, uh, or at least, you know, for the short term, um, in the immediate, I think I'm going to just be doing a couple live streams a day, guys. And, um, you know, if you, if you have the wherewithal or if you have it in your heart to, you know, throw me a couple of dollars on PayPal or something, that would be really helpful because, um, I have a job, but I kind of don't have a job cause it's not really, there's nobody out. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what to do. Anyways, that's what's happening. You might, might see a lot more of me since everybody's on lockdown and everybody's home homebound. Um, and I guess I'll be more homebound now. So, uh, probably we'll do a couple of live streams a day, try to do a couple of live streams a day, at least for the next, you know, week or two and see how that goes. Uh, Alaric Harrison says, uh, 7,500 Americans are in self quarantine. D truth says getting freaky in the UK. Keith Boyd, total economic collapse happening. Then there's that. Um, Dr. Fauci is another, am I saying his name right? T-dump, a mouthpiece that gets nothing done. Indeed. CB Unglesby, no touring for you. Yeah. Well, no touring and no, I actually drive Lyft during the day to make some bucks, to pay some bills. And I, there's nobody out. There's not a lot of, there's some passengers but not a lot it's not a lot to make it worth it to go be out driving around um, burning gas so um that leaves me with my other occupations which are you know youtube in it and uh um you know cranking out the music so there we go guai uh guo mashi says toilet paper profiteering in oregon i've, I've been hearing I've been hearing about some people, um, some not so nice people buying up products and then reselling them, them to people for a higher price, thus uh, making their profits. And that's really pretty shady if you ask me. 
Uh, Eyes to the skies says, always wondered what you would do, Kev. Well, yeah, that I, I'm wondering right now, and my answer right now is do a couple live streams a day, uh, try and pick up some more followers, uh, you know, hopefully I'll get a couple of donations here and there, whatever, and that might fill a little bit of the gap. I'm also planning on playing a lot more music, so I'll probably do like a, uh, a music live stream, maybe every day or maybe every other day. Um, not on this channel, but on some other channels. So, you know, I'll probably try and do that and then scare up a couple bucks that way. I don't know. The dude says I stocked up a month ago. Everyone said I was crazy. Good on you. The dude. Good on you. Very prescient of you. Brian Smith says lockdown in the hood. It's a white hood. <laughs> it's a white hood all up in here, but I never fit in anywhere. So I'm used to it. Yeah. Microsoft Word technical support says stock up on heroin and 45 ammo. Okay, that sounds that sounds pretty bleak, man. That is bleak. Black market butt wipes. Yeah, I, I heard about that. Um. Yeah, CB, my album is coming out next month, so I'm working frantically on that record. I'm I'm close. Uh, I'm gonna get done with the with the record like right you know, right at the deadline. But the record's supposed to be out on Earth Day. That's my goal. That's what's happening. So I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna make a bunch of music and push it out there and you know hope hopefully y'all like it. And hopefully a whole lot of other people like it. Yes, thank you, Ronald, bringing up the debate. So hey, did you all watch the debate? It was actually pretty, pretty decent. It was en entertaining and informative because there were only two people on the stage. So they got to talk about, uh, they got, got to talk about issues very in depth. And one of those issues was climate change. And Bernie basically said, Joe, getting back in the, getting back in the Paris Agreement. Yeah, whatever. He was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so what? Is exactly what he said. He said, getting back in the Paris Agreement, so what? Um, and then Biden was like, well, that's not nothing or whatever or something. And he's like, yeah, but it doesn't go far enough. So Bernie, Bernie's hipping people to the fact that the Paris Agreement is kind of just blowing smoke up, up the uh, global ass of, you know, the population. He's like, look, it's a serious problem. This is a serious problem. We need, you know. We need a $16 trillion plan. We don't need a $1 trillion plan. We need, you know, all hands on deck, you know? So he was, and they, they actually talked about climate change for a long time, uh, you know, possibly 10 minutes or so, which is, you know, maybe more than that, which is a decent amount of time for a presidential debate on CNN. There was a lot of talk of climate change and I was very happy to hear it. I was very happy to hear Bernie's, side of it i was very happy to hear bernie you know basically the entire debate bernie was telling biden he was full of shit <laughs> and he was calling him out and he was like basically calling him a liar without telling you know calling him a liar he's like did you or did you not vote to cut social security and and biden was like no i didn't and he was like really really you were on the you weren't on the floor telling people you're going to cut social security no no i never was and he was he just kept asking him. He asked him like five times and he rolled his eyes. He's like, whatever. <sighs> Anyways. I I it was a good debate, and Bernie absolutely just slapped Biden around. Just slapped him around. Um that's what he, he didn't he didn't go there in the whole is Biden unelectable. He didn't go there, and I wish he did. That was from Gene. Uh, he didn't go to whether Biden was unelectable, but he he basically said all all of your plans and all of your policies and all of your past positions um, don't really give the people much of anything to hang their hats on as far as your you know your potential presidency. So you know if you can you know if you can kind of just infer that he was saying like you're not going to be a very good president uh 
Alaric Harrison, yes, I heard, I saw that. Shutting down domestic travel being considered. Um, that is probably on the horizon. Um, Gazar Gazar says, eyes have gone off the ball of climate change because it is not instant. Nope. But how about that global dimming and the heating uh, incurred from the lack of aerosol masking effect? That's... That's going to be pretty instant. Uh, yeah, you know, everything is a complete mess. Everything is a complete mess. Jennifer Elizabeth, coronavirus-induced collapse coming. Yes. Brian Smith, absolutely. Bernie owned Joe. He absolutely owned his ass. Biden looked just like a, you know, like a stuttering fool. Um, and everything he said was hollow as shit. And how anybody could actually believe anything that Biden says, uh, I, I don't understand. Um, anyways, let me see. So, did I send myself an email or did I not send myself an email? So, this just in today from California's governor... Um, from Gavin Newsom. Uh, uh, he, he ordered bars to shut down. Uh, he ordered seniors to stay home. Uh, restaurants are not closed yet, but they are ordered to only serve uh, half of their capacity in trying to keep, you know, people not close together. I don't know how that's... Uh, so Gavin Newsom called Sunday for all senior citizens and residents with chronic conditions to isolate themselves at home, as well as for all bars, wineries, and brew pubs to close, launching the state's most sweeping effort yet to slow the spread of coronavirus. No other state has imposed such restrictions on residents age 65 and older. Newsom said his orders do not come with enforcement, but that he expects residents and counties to follow his protocols. So... This is not enforced, but he's just saying, please do this. California has 5.3 million residents over the age of 65. That's a lot of residents over the age of 65. This will be socialized in real time. Newsom said, I have all the confidence in the world. The governor's announcement came a day after large crowds continued to enjoy nightlife in cities across the nation. So, yeah, I mean, this has been something that's been talked about quite a lot. Um, and it's true. I mean, I'm, uh, as I'm driving around LA, I mean, people are out it's vacation time, right? Nobody has any, anywhere to go. They can't go anywhere. Nobody can go to work. All the kids are out of school. Um, conferences are canceled. Concerts are canceled. You know, things are shutting down and everybody's just kind of like, well, let's party. So like everybody's out at the bars, everybody, the restaurants are packed. The bars are packed. Like people are just, it's like vacation time. Literally, it's vacation time. Um, that's what I'm seeing with my own eyes. That's my, you know, on the ground observation or whatever. Um, and, you know, probably not doing good for the spreading of the COVID, you know, um, if that's what we're trying to, to, to control. Um, and as I say the word control, Jay Ackert says no such thing as control in life. Um, so yeah, you know, they, they've been, you know, everybody's out partying it up. Everybody's out having a good time. And, you know, Gavin Newsom's like, hold on a second. Maybe this is not so good. So maybe we should institute some kind of, you know, guidelines or whatever. Please stop hanging out, everybody, and partying. <laughs> um, you know, because you can't have a, a gathering of more than, I don't know what it is, 50 or 100 or something like that. I don't know what the official number is. I don't know what it's, you know, if there's like no gatherings more than whatever. Okay. But, um, you know, everybody's like, we can go to the bar, right? Uh, St. Patrick's Day is tomorrow. I think he did that in, you know, 
in advance of St. Patrick's Day because they were, you know, everybody's out of work and out of school, so everybody's going to go out and party. I think they were trying to get ahead of that. Um, California now has 335 positive uh, coronavirus tests. A 14% increase from Saturday. Well, 14% increase from Saturday in one day. A sixth person has died, though additional details were not immediately available. Uh, Let's look at some updates. This is from 21 minutes ago from CNN. There's one new update. Okay. Can we get the new? United Airlines to cut flight capacity by 50% in April and May. Wow. So we're not just going with the two weeks or four weeks. We're going all the way for two and a half months. In a letter to employees, United Airlines says it will slash its capacity by half in April and May due to the ongoing impact of the coronavirus crisis. 50%. 50%. So that's 50% less emissions. What does that mean? You guys know. Um, another update. The majority of coronavirus cases have now been outside of mainland China. There have now been more reported cases of the novel, uh, the novel coronavirus um, outside of mainland China than inside, according to the numbers from the World Health Organization and public health agencies tracked by CNN. While China, the early epicenter of the outbreak, has still had more confirmed infections than any other country, over 80,000 cases in several other countries have surged in recent days. Of course, China's um, infections have gone way down. They're on the other side as far as, you know, it looks like they're kind of on the other side of it. Um, We won't, you know, officially state that, but we'll just say it, it looks like it's waning in China. Uh, Italy has now more than 24,000 cases. Iran has more than 14,000. Spain has at least 7,000. On February 26, the WHO reported for the first time the majority of new cases per day had come from outside of China. The United States now has uh, reported more than 3,400 Cases and the death toll uh, is in the U.S. is 65. Parts of the Las Vegas Strip are shutting down due to coronavirus. Well, you know, duh. Um, Panama is limiting entry into the country. Uh, let's see what else we got. A couple other updates. Uh, worldwide, 153,648 confirmed cases, 5,746 deaths. U.S. extends the European travel ban to the U.K. and Ireland. So you can't sneak out of Europe through the U.K. or Ireland, Ireland unless you're an American citizen. Uh, yeah, the, the um, airports, I saw a couple of uh, updates from airports around the U.S. and they are absolutely mobbed with people trying to get back in from Europe. Spain is on a national lockdown. All 16 temporary COVID-19 hospitals in Wuhan have closed. Uh, World Health Organization calls for an all-of-society approach to fight pandemic. And after they're done with this, maybe we can do an all-of-society approach to fight climate change. Do you think that'll happen? What are the chances, guys? What are the chances? Where are you? Where'd you guys go? Oh, here you are. Um, Alaric Harrison says COVID-19 incubation quarantine period now up to 21 days. Um, <laughs> Ringtailed Fox says, I think China's just telling sick people to get back to work and try not to die on the factory floor to avoid an apocalyptic scenario. I don't, who knows? Who knows? Um, I mean, the, the information coming out of China has, you know, been met with a lot of raised eyebrows. Um, 
nay skepticism. Uh, so, you know, who knows what is really happening in China, but it looks, it looks like it's waning, um, for, you know, on the surface. <clears throat> Trisha Francesca, oh, I lost your comment. Trisha Francesca Jardine says, the, this whole thing really is a China pharma psyop. Every country is so in debt to China, China wants to take over. Maybe I'll give that some credibility. Sure. I'll, I'll put that in the could be pile. Um, you know, it's not, you know, the, the virus itself being extremely dangerous, being, being extremely contagious, you know, is, is the first part of this equation, but it's also like the response um, the response to it could, you know, could also have implications that are, are even farther than far beyond what the virus is going to do to people. Um, you know, the virus is bad. The virus is killing people. The vi virus is taking people down. Uh, it's causing this huge scare, of course, but it's, you know, the reaction to it, um, the shutting down of all economies and all, you know, um, activities you know, is obviously going to create an economic situation that we may or may not weather in the long term. Um, you know, so what does this look like for the long term? I think, you know, I think it's good to watch China, keep an eye on China and see what's really going on there. Are they, you know, are they really recovering? If they are recovering, you know, it is good for them, of course. Uh, but it also kind of shows that there is another side to it. They took extreme measures to counter the virus and to deal with it. But if they are truly on the other side of it, uh, you know, then that's kind of a bright spot. You know, then there, there is another side of this for, for everyone else. Um, you just have to deal with it correctly. Um, Damian Gonzalez says most of everything is shutting down or turning to delivery only in Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, everything is going online. Uh, people are just working from home. Everybody who can work, work remotely is working remotely. Um, uh, yeah, things are, you know, things, the delivery system is still going. There's, you know, goods and serv goods and services are still available for the most part. Um, you know, it's just shifting life into into a different mode. Uh, yeah, Damien, it looks like a ghost town, indeed. Yeah, I'm, I'm driving around LA. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a ghost town. It's much. There's much less activity, but it, you know, I some places are are straight up hopping. Like you know, downtown. I live in Pasadena. Downtown Pasadena is. It, it was bumping tonight. There were people. You know, there's people out out in the bars. People out in the restaurants. Everybody's walking down the street, you know, hand in hand, the girlfriends and the boyfriends or, you know, have, you know, everybody's like, hey, look at all this free time we got. Let's go enjoy ourselves. Um, Gene says 0.000001% chance of that happening. What, what, of what happening? Exactly. Uh... Let me see. I, I miss some. I miss some things. Irk one says coronavirus as pretense to restructure society. Indeed, could be. Keith Boyd, oil prices have crashed. Indeed, they have. We've been talking about that over the last couple of days. I don't know what they are today. Uh, let's look at them today. Yeah, I mean they're still they're still down and going. They're they're about where they were <clears throat> a few days ago with you know a different uh, differentiation by of like you know one or two dollars, but they're all around thirty dollars. So you know a little higher than thirty, a little lower than thirty, um, which you know is not going to do anybody any good if you're in the fossil fuel industry, and and that means you know bad bad times for the fossil fuel industry. We can go ahead and cheer that on. We can go ahead and say, 
huzzah for that. Um, D truth, yeah, that's happening here as well. Supermarkets are emptying, and the shops are now controlling the amount of products you buy at once. That's happening here. I mean, and that I think they should totally do that because it's ridiculous. Because you know, many people already have all the things they need. They've already stocked up. They've got enough stuff for a couple months or a month or two. And some people are just trying to get a couple things to last them through the week. So let people just get the few things that they need. You know, there's plenty of stuff. There's no need to hoard. You know, get look. If you need to shop for the next two weeks, fine. Um, that's reasonable. But there's no reason to go buy, you know, eight. Um, there's no reason to go buy, uh, you know, eight packs of toilet paper. Like, come on. Ridiculous. There's absolutely no, no, no reason for it. Eyes to the skies. I don't know why you say goodbye. I say hello, hello, hello. Um... Oh, got it. Gene clarified the climate crisis being the next fo focus of the U.S. task force. Yeah. But if you were watching the debate tonight, you know, Bernie, Bernie made it very clear this is a very serious situation, even though I could literally hear the entire American citizenry yawning like, oh, yeah. Climate change, yeah, sure, that's a big problem. You know what I mean? Like, uh, that's, so many people are so fucking clueless. Um, and just, you know, intentionally ignorant about climate change. If they understood how bad climate change was, if they understood the implications of what the science is telling us, we would be fighting climate change the same way we're fighting coronavirus right now. So, <clears throat> indeed, this fight against coronavirus is a very good blueprint for what should be, you know, <clears throat> done to fight, fight climate change um, in some ways. Uh, obviously, th there's got to be a lot, of more, a lot more nuance for the climate change fight. But, you know, we could start with shutting, shutting shit down. Um, the truth panic is setting in. Oh, yeah, the panic has set. The panic has settled. The panic is in full crank. Sandy, how you doing? <clears throat> yes, yes, I am on. I'm going to be on a lot. <laughs> this is my new, this is my new, uh, my new thing. Everybody's in lockdown. Everybody's in quarantine. Everybody's self-isolating. Uh, everybody's social distancing. Everybody is, um, you know. Doing what they got to do. Give me one second. Um, yeah, so, you know, because of that, um, because I also am in some ways, you know, kind of... Uh, forced thankfully to stay home a little a little more uh i'll probably be doing a couple live streams a day um gene says i refuse to be panicked it is pointless and i absolutely agree with you um i mean you know i'm taking precautions and i'm you know there there's there's i have a few moments of you know, worry, concern, should I be, should I be doing, what should I be doing? Should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? But like panic? No. Uh, don't feel the panic. Not quite yet. If people are running crazy down the street with, you know, um, uh, automatic weapons, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or if people were driving around in big ass trucks, Mad Max style, you know, looking for houses to ransack, then, then I might be panicked, but we're not there yet. We're not there yet. So, uh, Cats and Jammer 23 says, if you're bored, read a good book. I co sign that. I co sign that. Um, Zoxelix, now there is a very good point. 
banks are going to limit cash withdrawals soon. I wonder. I I don't know about that yet, but you know, could maybe could be if the banks really start cratering, if the system really starts cratering. Maybe, maybe might be a good time to have some cash on hand. Uh, might be a good time to have some silver. Maybe. Scott Andrews, I agree with you. Panic begets more panic. Look, right now as it stands, there's plenty of food. There's plenty of stuff in the stores. There's plenty of there's the su- supply chain is still operating. So. You know, they're shutting down travel for people. They're not shutting down shipping necessarily. So, you know, right now we're not in that state yet, you know. Um, If the economy, if the, you know, global economic system completely crashes, then that's a different story. But we're not there yet. (laughs) We're not there yet. But, you know, prepare thyselves as best you can. Rich Diana says, this is shit hits the fan. Maybe. I mean, look, I, I'm not going to say it's not going to hit the fan. Probably. Um, it's very likely. It's it's very possible. <laughs> let's, let's go with very possible. Yes, I saw that. 1.5 trillion says the banks aren't cratering. They injected another 700 billion indeed. Oh, yeah. Oh, and they're going to do more. Oh, yeah, they will. They lower the interest rate to zero again. Yes. They are pulling out all the stops. They are like, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's all you have to know to, to say, you know, on the economic front, it's bad. It's bad. <clears throat> um, Jay Ackert says, I did my bank run two weeks ago thanks to a pessimistic doom and gloomer. You got you to gotta thank the doomers in your life. Ring-tailed Fox says TV station in Detroit went off the air on Friday and can't come back because a part they need for their transmitter is stuck in Italy from quarantine. An omen of things to come. There you go. Well, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe I'm totally wrong, guys. Maybe don't listen to me. Uh, yeah, I'm just not. I'm not feeling the panic yet, but maybe I should. I don't know. I'm just trying to remain calm and. You know, keep my brain functioning. TCR Galaxy, we had a good run, guys. Uh, We had a good run. It's been fun, guys. Izako Palma says, get close to Jesus before it's too late. Uh, Basil Belong, do I need to take my money out of the bank? I don't know. We're not there yet, but hey, why why not do it just in case? Why not? If you have a lot of money in the bank, I would say pull that pull that bad boy out now. Because because things are happening so fast. I mean, we went from early last week to uh hey, there's a couple of cases in California to <laughs> uh to Friday all school shutting down and all kinds of, you know, NBA canceling, uh festivals canceling. Right. We went we went we went from zero to 60 in in one week. Um, You know, if if domestic travel is completely shut down this week, shit could get real, 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 real is what I was trying to say. Um, Jay Ackert carrying wood into a burning house. Karen Daly, I don't want to go to the stores and be exposed to the virus. There you go. I mean, that's the funny the funny part to me, which I mentioned yesterday. Uh, you know, everybody social distance, but everybody go to the store and buy everything they can. Um, TCR galaxy. I have cliff bars, edibles, spare bike parts, silver water. What else do I need? I don't know. Sounds like you're doing pretty good. Uh, let's see. The U.S.-Mexico border, let's go to that. U.S.-Mexico border could be shut down to contain coronavirus. In an ironic twist, <laughs> Mexico could be shutting down the, vo- the border. 
Nah, you guys can't come in. The U.S.-Mexican border can be shut down to contain the coronavirus outbreak by Mexico. Health officials said Mexico, where there are 26 confirmed cases, um, you know, m many, many less than the 3,000 or more cases confirmed here, is preparing to ban non-essential services like classes and seminars this weekend to prevent spread, among other measures. So it sounds like Mexico is a little behind us as far as the ramping up of the panic, but maybe they're getting close. Uh, the U.S., where there are 2,100... Well, this is old news. This is from yesterday. 2,174 cases and 47 deaths is a danger to the country, its health minister said Friday. Go ahead and have a little chuckle on that. If it were technically necessary to consider mechanisms of restriction or stronger surveillance, we would have to take into account not that Mexico would bring the virus to the United States, rather that the United States would bring it here. Deputy Health Minister Hugo lopez Gatel said, President Trump, meanwhile, has said the epidemic is another reason why the U.S. should build a wall between the two countries, et cetera, et cetera. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. It's getting real. On some levels, it's getting real ironic, and it's getting very funny. Um, and scary. Fresh Jordan 507 says, what am I supposed to do Friday and Saturday nights? Please advise. You can watch Black Bear News. I'll be on Friday and Saturday nights, at least for the next couple of weeks. Um... <laughs> Plot twist. Ring-tailed fox. Plot twist. Mexico builds a wall to keep out Americans. Indeed. It's funny. If you guys know who Cliff um, High is, uh, I used to talk about Cliff High a lot. Um, Cliff High does, does a thing called the web bot, which kind of predicts the future based on a spider that goes out and crawls all over the internets and looks for fu future... Uh, Predictive language um, on websites. Anyways, um, many years ago, they were saying something about the fact that Mexico, in the future, Mexico would be trying to keep Americans out. <laughs> and here we go. Hey, doggy, don't bump my lights. <laughs> Say what? Fresh Jordan says, no offense. I hate that answer, but, but respect it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Jay Ackert says building a wall around a collapsing empire tends to happen like that. Sure. Okay, dog. My dog is trying to knock over everything. Um, so uh, Tulsi... Uh, la over the last few days, introduced a bill into Congress about giving Americans UBI while all of this stuff goes on. I, uh, many people in the progressive worlds uh, support this. I support it too. I think it's a great idea because um, people are going to be cash strapped over the next few months, especially the poor, especially people who are working, you know, gig job, gig type jobs. Uh, people who are working for tips. Um, yeah, people are going to be having a lot of issues economically. So she's introduced a emergency UBI bill. We'll see if it gets passed. I don't have a lot of hope for it. I also think um, that Bernie Sanders or, you know, Bernie Sanders and or some uh, – Congress people should introduce a an emergency Medicare for all bill. So basically, like, let's just take this for a test ride. You know, let's do Medicare for all for the next three months. See how it goes. I think that would be a perfect way to introduce people to the wonders of Medicare for all. Um, Fresh Jordan, man, I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do. It's a, it's a rough world, man. You know, get to the stores, get you some gin or whatever it is you like to drink and mix it up. Um, you know, 
get into the the radio player, the Spotify, the the YouTube's, you know. I used to love drinking by myself. <laughs> Back in the day, I used to love getting a whole bunch of liquor and just hanging out with me and my brain. Uh, D truth, the dog's like who the fuck are you talking to exactly? Dog doesn't understand. I'm sorry, Thunder. Um, yeah, drink at home, do FaceTime or Skype. Exactly. There you go. FaceTime some people, start drinking. Uh, play virtual dominoes. I don't know. Learn how to dig a well and grow some bamboo. Live stream and filter straw. Soxalix, you are in a doom. You are in a doomish mood, aren't you? Water gone, drinks gone, pills gone, medicals gone, toilet paper gone. True, that's a true story. You're right. Paper products all going. Francis Madigan sums it up perfectly. Climate change. Some people can't bring themselves to take the bull by the tail and face the situation. Indeed, and that's really you know. People don't understand it, for one. And if they did understand it, it's too heavy, right? Coronavirus is actually like shrug worthy in in the face of climate change, right? You know, coronavirus, you know, scary. Climate change, fucking scary. Like, uh, because it's gigantic when you really start trying to understand the science and trying to understand like the predicament that we're in. And trying to understand how difficult it is to actually do anything about it. Um, that's where people's brains just start melting out of their ears. And they just cannot fucking take it. And, you know, unfortunately humans, you know, not all humans can handle, you know, the truth. So, it is what it is. And it's up to the people that can handle the truth to kind of walk the rest of the population um, into the light or not, <laughs> or maybe just walk themselves into the light and, you know, let the other people figure it out for themselves. I don't know. Alaric Harrison, Elizabeth Warren, still silent on endorsement. Oh yeah. She will stay silent because uh, I don't know if I told you guys, but I told a bunch of other people, Elizabeth Warren will wait until Biden is the nominee and then she'll endorse him because she's, a weak ass because she doesn't really stand for anything because she's really just a political player in the game. She said so herself. And, or even if Bernie got the nomination, she would wait until somebody gets nominated and then, then she'll go, oh, okay, I endorse them. Um, because Elizabeth Warren should not be listened to ever about anything because she's just, she's just a politician. She's just a fake ass and a phony and a liar. Um, Catman do you are one of the important voices in the darkness. Please do these live chats as often as possible. Well, you're in luck, Catman do. In my opinion, uh, is that Bernie is failing us? He's not fighting for our FDR style rights. I, you know, I agree. There's a lot of blame and there's a lot of uh, critique that Bernie, um. Um, has earned. And I think, you know, I think there's a lot of things he did wrong. There's a lot of things he's doing wrong um, in his campaign. He's doing the best he can, I think. Uh, he could do better. I agree with you. And he came out pretty harsh tonight on the debate. If you watch the debate, he came out swinging. He came for Joe's head. He was like, I'm not letting, it, I'm not letting you out of my sights. He really came out hard on Joe Biden. And, you know, I think that's the thing he has to do. Um, could he go out? He, could he come out harder? Could he come out better? Of course. He can always do better. He could always come out harder. Um, I think he's trying to ramp it up as quickly as he possibly can. With this entire global situation happening, who knows what's going to happen? Anything can happen. They could postpone the primaries, the rest of the primaries, until like May or June. 
which gives, you know, Bernie like a couple of months to tell everybody like what an idiot Joe Biden is or it gives a couple of months for Joe Biden to fall on his fucking face. So anything can happen. No representation. Warren is a horrible person, proved it back in 2016. Actually, so there's been a lot of talk about in the primaries that the youth vote hasn't shown up for Bernie. And I think that that is because people were so pissed off in 2016. So many people gave up on the political process or felt cheated by the system and by the process that they just... I, I know a few people who were Bernie supporters in 2016 and they walked away. They walked away from Bernie and they walked away from the DNC and they walked away from everything. So I think that's why the youth are not showing up for Bernie like they did in 2016 because they had high hopes. Those hopes were dashed and they, you know, they were like, never again. I'm walking away and I'm not going to come back. Some people are still, you know, trying to ride Bernie into the presidency. I'm one of those people. You know, we'll see what happens. Um, Brian Smith, we have power. Email your donation to Bernie. Uh, a Bernie receipt to Biden. Yes. Uh, no representation says they just don't need to have any more debate scheduled. It's that simple, of course. And they will try. They will try. They will try. Um... They will try to just hand it to Biden. Um, you know, I, I I expect no less than a lot more fuckery uh, in this here situation. It can only get weirder from here, right? I don't expect it to get less weird. I expect it to get much more weird. Um, CB Unglesby, we need that third party. Indeed, I agree with you, sir. No representation says I'm not young, but I left Bernie for Tulsi. And also that happened too. So a lot of the young people left <clears throat> Bernie for Tulsi or for Yang. Um, or just left altogether. Some people left for Trump. Some people left for Jill Stein. Some people left for, you know, none of the above. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Uh, Anthony Gelbert says futures are locked at minus 5% panic in the markets. Well, <clears throat> we'll see. Uh, there were two suspensions of trading last week. Is that, uh, that's, you know, signs that things are real, real bad. If you hit the trigger, if you hit the uh, stop trading trigger, um, that's a sign that things are wildly out of control. We'll see what happens this week. Zoxalix says pay minimum on your bills. Irk one sums it all the way up and says Biden sucks. All right, guys, I gotta, I gotta sign off. Thank you so much for joining in on the chat with me. Uh, I think we covered... I think we covered the things I wanted to cover today. Um, but check it out. I will probably be back. Well, I will be back tomorrow. Probably be back tomorrow morning sometime. Um, so hope to see you all then. Uh, you know how to support the channel at the links below. Thank you for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. And I will see you on the flip.